Hi, this is Wilderness Surviving to Thriving, and today we're going to talk about, yep, you guessed it, the dandelion. Now, why am I talking about this weed? It's because it's 100% edible. That's why we're talking about it. Now, I know what you're saying. You dislike this weed because it messes up your nice green yard. But I'm going to try to convince you that this weed is a great, is a great weed. It's a, it's a great thing to have in your yard. So hopefully I can convince you of that. All right, let me take you back to when you were a child and you went out in the front yard and you saw all these pretty flowers out there, these yellow flowers. You picked them up and you gave them to your mom and your mom pretended like she was so happy to receive them. Now that gave you a nice warm fuzzy feeling. You know, uh, just take you back to that. Or maybe your child gave you the, uh, the flowers and you, you know, had a great smile on your face, whether it's real or not, I don't know. But, uh, you know, just think how your, your child felt and how you felt about that. Also, you know, this weed has so many songs about it and, you know, like your mama had the baby and, well, the rest maybe not pro is appropriate, but, uh, you know, there's songs about it. What other weed can you make a wish on? You know, this weed, you can do that. How many times have you done that in your life? It brings back fond memories, doesn't it? Um, other things you can do with it, you know, you can um, take off the stem and make jewelry out of it, you know, make a, a, a ring, a necklace, a bracelet, you know, um, how many times have you played with that? Um, also, other things, you know, you can play games with it. For instance, you know, who can flick the uh, the ends the furthest, you know, <laughs> you know, something like that. Um, you, you know, other things you can do with this weed um, is, you know, you can play tricks on people. Get them all yellow. You know, the blind man, the deaf man, you know, go up the arm and get them all yellow. Um, this weed has so many, so many great memories. Now, if none, if none of these things convinced you, um, and um, brought back great memories. Let's think about the animals. Now, as we know, the bee is uh, the honeybee is in declining for some reason. They're they're reducing in their numbers. Um, why? Um, not quite sure. I haven't done the reading on that. But uh, we I know that they are constantly on these things and other pollinators also. So if you like hug honey, maybe you like these things. And, you know, let's keep these things around for, you know, the bees and the pollinators. Now, if you're not a big fan of that, uh, maybe wild animals eat this um, all the time. So if you don't like wild animals, you don't like bees, and you don't have any fond memories, and you want to get absolutely insist on getting rid of this, go ahead and dig it up from the roots. Um, when you dig it up from the roots, it removes the whole thing. Um, if you just take it from the top and leave a little bit of roots, roots there, it will come back on you. So uh, dig it up from roots. Whatever you do, don't use chemicals on this. Um, the chemicals get into your water, as you know, and also, you know, could get in your honey. Who knows the effects of that? And also, uh, the, just the animals in general. What's the negative effects on that? I'm sure there's some negative effects on that. So please don't use chemicals and, um, you know, dig it up if you want to remove it. If I haven't convinced you, just to leave it alone. Um, you know, I, um, a couple years ago, several years ago, I ran into a natural landscaper, and the natural landscaper, um, he does pretty cool stuff. He does, like, uh, rock walls and makes them look old, you know, by putting moss in between it. Or he, um, you know, will take, like, a rock, a boulder, and turn it over to create a chair or a table or, you know, a lounge chair. He'll, he uses the, you know, the, the elements around him, and he really landscapes with what he has available on the property, which is pretty cool. But anyways, he told me a story about a Japan, an elderly Japanese man, um, and he uh, told his student to go out in the courtyard to, to make the area beautiful. So he, so he tells the student to make the area beautiful. He goes out there, the student, and he sees a Japanese maple tree there with all leaves on the ground. So he rakes up all the leaves, puts them in the bucket, and he removes the leaves. And then he goes to his master and he says, hey, master, look, look what I did. And uh, the master, you know, he had a big smile on his face and everything. And the master didn't have any expression at all. The master walked right up to the Japanese maple tree, shook the tree, and had the leaves fall down onto the ground. And the master said, hey, now that, now, now it's beautiful. So the moral of the story really is, is that, um, some really loud crows over there. The uh, moral of the story is, is that nature is beautiful just the way it is. So, 
You don't have to do anything to make it beautiful. It's already beautiful. Now, do I rake the leaves at home and mow the grass at home? Yes, I do do that because of fire hazards and ticks and what have you. But in, in reality, it's probably better off to uh, just leave the leaves there because it creates an um, environment for, you know, smaller animals to, you know, to get away from like the birds and what have you, you know, animals live underneath those leaves and trans, you know, uh, travel underneath those leaves. So um, it is probably better to leave it alone. But you know, I do it like I said for fire hazards and ticks and what have you. So, but anyway, so if this doesn't, if this didn't convince you, um, of you know, just to leave these things alone, then maybe the uh, nutritional value of it will uh, help you out, in the, or the taste of it, because it tastes pretty good sometimes. So let me go ahead and get into that. Okay, the dandelion has vitamin A, C, and K. It's a good source of calcium, potassium, iron, and manganese. Now, um, you know, they named this thing, uh, I think the French named it lion tooth for, you know, the, the way it looks here. This is to identify it. As you can see, I don't know if it looks like a lion's tooth or not. I was never this close to a lion before. But uh, anyways, it kind of looks like a spearhead or so. So this is how it looks. You can see what the flowers look like, you know, inside the, you know, it's hollow as you can see. And you can kind of split it right open. It's kind of wet inside. I think you all know what a dandelion is, so I'm not going to get too much into the description of it. Um... You know what you can you know put this stuff in i'll just give a scan of some dandelions all over here there are some false dandelions out there um that have you know a similar top you know like this um i don't know if those are edible or not i can't think what the name of that is but um this is what it looks like and i'm sure you all like i said know what it is um what you can eat of it what you can do with it as far as food you can put it into salads um you can you know make soups out of it um you can also uh, make wine out of it. I never done that, but I'm willing to try it, of course. Um, also, you could ground up the uh, the roots of this, and uh, you know the roasted roots, roast them, ground it up, and you can make coffee out of that. So teas out of it also. Um, it also has um, medicinal uses also. Now with the medicinal uses, um, you know a lot of this stuff. Um, who knows how far they went into studying this. So I don't know how accurate all this stuff is, but I think they need to do more research on it. But there's a tons of medicinal uses. I heard it, it and I had to look this up. It uh, treats infections, viral, and also it helps with cancer. Um, bile and liver, liver problems, it helps that. It's a diuretic. Um, I think in one country they called it wet the bed, or, well, they call it by another name, but I'm not going to say it. Um, but anyway, um, what else does it do? Uh, helps with uh, la uh, loss of appetite, upset stomach, I heard, intestinal gases, joint pains, muscle aches, bruises. Now, how do you go about doing that? I, I'm going to have to look that up if you, you know, are supposed to do something with it and rub it on you or if you eat it. I'm not quite sure, so I'm going to have to figure that part out. Um, you know, what else did I say? Uh, decreases, uh, it helps with bruises. I think I said that already. Um, helps with swelling. Um, I know there was a study I read about that uh, they had people with their tonsils taken out. They had they made dandelion soup for some, and others didn't have it. The ones that ate the dandelion soup healed a lot faster than the ones that didn't do it. So I found that quite interesting. So that's pretty cool. So like I said, enough study. A lot of studies haven't been done on this uh, this weed. So. Um, you know, if you're pregnant or if you have a lot of allergies or you're breastfeeding or whatever the case may be, you might want to investigate, um, you know, this stuff before you go ahead and eat it. But like I always say, you know, always do your homeworks before you're eating wild edibles and make sure, um, you know, you consult le local experts. Um, I know everyone knows what a dandelion is. You know, you can see these things, you see these things everywhere. But like I said, you know, there are you know, mimics and copies out there in nature of whatever. There are, you know, ones that are, look similar to this. Um, at least the, the flower does, at least. So just be careful. Always, uh, before you eat anything, consult a lo local expert. Now, as far as, you know, the taste of dandelion, sometimes it can be very bitter. So um, what you can do to make it uh, more palatable if, if you have that problem. Like I said, everyone's different. Sometimes the, you know, younger ones are, you know, very palatable. Some sometimes the, the you know the older ones, the bigger ones, are more 
um, you know, bitter or whatever the case may be. Maybe it's vice versa to you, whatever the case is. Um, you can uh, blanch them to remove the bitter bitterness. You can, you know, steam them, you know, uh, saute them, you know, cook them like spinach, you know. Um, basically, if you cook them up, it, it removes the bitterness a little bit. But anyways, this is uh, Wilderness Surviving the Thriving. I'll see you next time. Thanks.